Hi there. The other day I was digging around my photo archives, as I sometimes do, and I came across this photograph, which might be familiar to some of you if you've been to the iVoyage website, where we have the free ebook called Seven Tips for Natural Looking Travel Portraits. This image is on the cover of that ebook. Now, as I was digging around those archives, I saw that I actually had a few different versions of this image that were pretty decent, yet I chose this particular photograph. And I thought that the reason, as well as the story behind the photograph, might be a good enough excuse for this uh, little video. So first, let me tell you a little bit about where the image was taken. I made the photograph in Ethiopia, in the northern region called Tigray. And more specifically, this is West Tigray. Now, all of Tigray is pretty mountainous. These images here are good examples of the kind of terrain that you come across. It's pretty rough. There aren't a whole lot of ways to get to the region. It's, it, it is pretty remote. And as you see, this little road, basically a winding sort of uh, dirt road, uh, these are really the main sort of veins which connect uh, this region to the rest of Ethiopia. So we rode the motorcycle around these little roads all the way out to an area called Abi Adi. And the primary reason why we came here was connected to this terrain and to the mountains. It was to see the rock churches for which Tigray is quite well known. You see that these rock churches are just built in most insane places, sort of carved right into the face of the cliffs. So they were the main reason why we came, and I obviously made uh, quite a few images on this topic. I uh, met a lot of wonderful characters, and that was kind of the main purpose. However, quite often, uh, while you might have sort of the major thing that you're photographing, you also discover fascinating subjects or just meet fascinating people along the way or around those places. So this particular photograph was actually taken uh, really very near this church. This girl wasn't alone. You can see that she came with her friends or her sisters and they all belong to the village uh, just below this uh, mountain or cliff uh, where the church was located. So what they were doing is basically their daily chore. And getting water for their households and so there's usually a stream sometimes a pump where everybody that needs water goes and they fill up these containers this is uh, something that you see a lot of around ethiopia and in fact uh, i've seen these sort of containers uh, around other places in africa too uh, people go with their donkeys or whatever animals they have and they fill up their containers and off they go back to their homes until the water runs out and they do the same thing again it's important to know that I was traveling with my friend and translator and basically sort of right-hand man in Memphis at this time. It probably wouldn't have been too much of a problem photographing these girls. However, uh, some girls in Ethiopia do tend to get shy and it's much better to kind of explain what you're doing, especially in an area like this, because they rarely see any foreigners. So they don't have much contact at all with the outside world and you don't really want to freak them out too much. So Zemenfis explained what we're doing and then you see that the girls are smiling in this photograph, but some of the older ones, they sort of don't really want to be a part of it. You know, they're too cool for it, they're too busy. And Zemenfis actually asked uh, some of the older girls, something like, hey sister, do you want me to help you? And they, uh, they declined with a funny kind of response saying something along the lines of I've survived without you all these years, what do I need your help for? So they definitely have attitude, a lot of character, a lot of personality. Now the little girl's name is Zafu and she was very shy. You see her with her younger friends or siblings here. I don't really remember whether they were her friends or her siblings. It was a combination of the fact that I thought that she was particularly photogenic and was the one which was most willing to be photographed, these factors, they kind of led me to take uh, a few a few pictures of her. Looking at the past couple of images, you can see that I'm starting wide and then I come in. I'm looking for the framing from which I can tell my story ideally. And in this case, I found that framing relatively early. So right by, I don't know which number shot this was uh, during the shoot, but relatively quickly, I got to the exact framing which I would actually keep for the photograph that I was happy with. A few things are working in my favor in this particular case. In the ebook on natural looking travel portraits, I talk about body language, about how children might be wriggling and covering their faces or just making certain gestures. And then quite often we as adults try to straighten them out and try to get them to look in a particular way, which is actually probably counter natural. And it doesn't really show that much of their personality. So I actually really like the fact that Zafu was covering her face here because she's showing that's a reflection of her personality. Another thing that's happening is that she's accentuating this old torn up material 
which kind of adds to the story, you know, that this is the thing that she wears in order to keep herself a little bit warm in the mornings when she does these chores. And the state of this material says a little something about her background, about her situation. And of course the color, it complements this whole scene which is full of quite cool looking colors. The next image is the image where I actually felt in retrospective that I nailed it. This is far from always the case, but I managed it here. And what are the reasons why I think that I nailed it? Well, I like the fact that Zafu is not looking directly at me, not looking into the lens. It gives the image much more of a candid feel. She's in her own world, she's covering her face. It kind of makes me feel much more of an observer. And that's not necessarily always a good thing. Sometimes it is good to be a participant where the subject is looking directly at you. But in this case, I really loved the fact that there is this little bit of distance. There is this bit of a candid moment and all these other elements along with the fact that this is a candid moment. That's what gives the image a little bit of magic for me. It's not your typical kind of photograph that you might necessarily expect in such a situation. And this image is probably getting closer to that more typical kind of photograph off the subject looking at the camera, sort of engaging the viewer. And I think it's a pretty decent photograph in this case, but I do love the fact that in the previous image, Zafu is sort of looking away from the camera. Still, a lot of things are working in this uh, photograph. Uh, Zafu is uh, still covering up her face a little bit. I'm still seeing this uh, torn up material, but I think that the sense of mystery of not really knowing what's going on in her mind, it's, it's kind of more prevalent in the previous photograph. With this next image, I'm just trying to continue shooting because you don't know when you might have the photograph. So as things are unfolding, I'm trying to see what's going on. She's starting to open up her face, but she's still very shy. And the reason why she's starting to open up, uncover her face is because the Memphis unwittingly uh, sort of said, hey, uh, why didn't you open your face for a photograph? And that, and I kind of thought like, oh man, this is exactly not what I want because I don't want us to kind of impose what, how we want her to look. So that's what happened. But I thought, okay, I'll go along with it. I'll see how things develop. But here she's not really looking at the camera, which in on, on one level is good but the other image the one that i chose i much prefer that because the direction which is looking there's this catch light in her eyes and it just looks a lot more alive for a lot of people this image would probably be the preferred one it's not for me i like a lot of things about it it does certainly reflect her personality because you still see that she's very shy she's still sort of covering her face a little bit here but what i don't like is the fact that she's looking at the camera that she's smiling I've mentioned this idea a few times on my blog and elsewhere that I don't like photographs of smiling children. And this isn't because I'm a bad person, I don't like to see children smile or laugh. It's just that I think it's almost like that low hanging fruit. It's the most typical thing to photograph. And this is what will always be there for you. Almost all around the world, children will run up to the camera, they'll smile at the camera and there's your photo opportunity. I don't think that there's much uniqueness in a photograph like that. Although in this particular case, it is a different kind of smile, I guess. It's this sort of really reserved smile, but still I think that it does fall into that smiling, uh, happy kids category, which is much more of a tourist snapshot, in my opinion. And sometimes the difference is so tiny, you know, and sometimes it's just a difference in the choice of the photograph. So although this image on many levels works, and it's probably the preferred image for many people, it doesn't really work for me. Uh, just before I go on to this photograph, I want to insert a little disclaimer at this point that whatever I'm talking about, these are purely my ideas. They've come from my experiences, from my travels around the world and whatever has happened to me. By no means am I saying that this is the way that things should be like, that I know everything better than everybody else. No, that's not the case. I stand by my views and by my beliefs and I back them up with whatever theories I have but it doesn't really mean that everybody has to stop shooting uh, smiling children you know you can continue it's just not for me so let's move on to this next image when you compare it to the other ones and again you can only really decide in retrospective this photograph just doesn't stand up and you can see now here on this sort of uh, contact sheet as I look at all of the photographs next to each other, that's when I really start to make the decision. And all of these are very similar, but then I start to compare, okay, what is it that this one has that the other one doesn't have? 
what is it that one might be missing and then at the end of the day you just choose whatever really is the best one and the one that I chose my personal opinion again because of the fact that I don't like the whole idea of smiling kids that's why I chose the photograph that I chose someone might have chosen another one and that's fine but in my case I think that that one works the best and the last image it just doesn't stand up to some of the stronger photographs in this series. I'm just going to very quickly talk about these images here. When you find an interesting subject, when you find an interesting scene, you just keep on photographing. You don't know when you're actually going to get that shot. You can only really judge in retrospective. I mean, sometimes at the time of the shoot, you do know, okay, I got that image, but still within the bigger frame of things, you don't actually know until you go back and you look at the images on the computer or however you look at them. So you keep on photographing and then you look for the image that really works best on all levels. So I kept on shooting. I wanted to demonstrate what the girls are doing, that they're gathering this water that basically showing that they are doing these chores. Now, what doesn't work for me in all of these images is the fact that we have these yellow containers. At least that's the primary element. It works as a documentary image, but the kind of beautiful, sort of serene, maybe even somewhat mystical photograph that I was looking for, they don't really allow me to do that. And that's because this bright yellow color, it breaks up the rhythm of these cool, very sort of contained colors. There's this splash of yellow right in the middle or right in a place where it draws enough attention from the viewer. If you look at these photographs from the point of view of whether they contribute to the story, yes, they do. But in this particular case, I really wanted an image which would be simple and is not necessarily a documentary storytelling type of image. So as we're going through these photographs, you see that they do have a merit of their own. They do work on a certain level, but just not on the level that I was looking for. By the way, just a very quick plug uh, to the ebook that I made for iVoyage, which is called Powerful Imagery. If you like these kinds of behind the scenes analysis of photographs, that's exactly what that ebook is about. A look at the contact sheet, break down the decisions that I made, talk about the challenges, the light, and even the post-processing steps. And these images are certainly post-processed, but uh, I'm not going to go into all that stuff in this particular video. Uh, that we can leave uh, for another time. Or also there's another uh, thing called uh, Understanding Post-Processing, the video series. You can also find that on the iVoyage website. Before we go, uh, a plug for something that's absolutely free. If you haven't yet got the ebook, Seven Tips for Natural Looking Travel Portraits, I don't know what you're waiting for. It's absolutely free. You don't have to pay anything. Just uh, put in your details and download your copy. And you can read um, more about this photograph as well as other ones and basically making portraits of people from different cultures and making those portraits look natural. Uh, so that's it from me. Thanks a lot for watching.